Hello friends, uh, welcome. Today we are going to discuss about the fabrication of uh, semiconductors. Now before we go deep into this uh, fabrication of uh, semiconductors concept, first we must uh, know the types of semiconductors basing upon their various uh, characteristics and properties. So here we have is a classification of semiconductors. Now the property which is we have used here is their purity, the purity level of the semiconductors. Now so first we have is the intrinsic semiconductor. Now what is an intrinsic semiconductor? An intrinsic semiconductor is one which is an extremely pure form, a semiconductor in its absolute pure state is called as an intrinsic semiconductor. It has no purity, it has no impurity added to it. It is extremely pure, the absolute state, in its true state, a semiconductor in its true state is called as an intrinsic semiconductor. Next we have is the extrinsic semiconductor. Now it is found that when some amount of a specific impurity substance or a particular impurity uh, chemical substance is added to a pure semiconductor or intrinsic semiconductor, its conductivity increases or its conductivity changes significantly. Now this uh, process of addition of impurity to uh, increase the conductivity of the semiconductor, this process is called as doping. This process is called as doping. Now generally uh, for every 10 to the power 8 atoms of the semiconductor one impurity atom is added. Okay, for every 10 to the power 8 atoms of the original semiconductor uh, intrinsic semiconductor uh, substance, one impurity atom is added. Now this doped semiconductor is called as an extrinsic semiconductor. So a semiconductor with without any impurity is intrinsic semiconductor while a semiconductor with impurity uh, added a semiconductor with impurity added is called as a extrinsic semiconductor okay uh, so next we have is the classification of extrinsic semiconductors or the impurity added semiconductors. Now this classification is done in terms of the uh, type of charge carriers involved. So let's just, uh, I am going, just going to state it right now, I am going to explain it later. So the extrinsic semiconductors are of two types, N type semiconductor and P type semiconductor. I am going to tell you what is the N and P thing uh, in the next, uh, I am going to tell you, let us just uh, do that. Now here we have is the fabrication of N type extrinsic semiconductor. How to prepare an N type extrinsic semiconductor with increased conductivity? Now, I told you earlier that an impurity is added to the intrinsic semiconductor to increase its conductivity. So how do we decide what type of impurity should be added to the semiconductor so that its conductivity will increase? So when a small amount of uh, this 
pentavalent impurity is added to a pure intrinsic semiconductor this resultant extrinsic semiconductor is called as a n type semiconductor now this is the definition of n type semiconductor a simple definition now what is pentavalent pentavalent substance means there are five electrons in the outer valence band or the outer band or the valence band the outermost orbit of the atom contains five electrons now typical examples of pentavalent impurities are arsenic with atomic number 33 and antimony with atomic number 51 now let us discuss the bond formation of the n type extrinsic semiconductors now when a pentavalent arsenic is added to let's say intrinsic germanium semiconductor each arsenic impurity atom positions itself in such a way that it is surrounded by four germanium semiconductor atoms now we know that uh, the valency of germanium is four it has four electrons in its outermost orbit so the four valence electrons out of the five all total valence electrons of arsenic enter into covalent bond formation with one electron each from the four germanium neighboring atoms okay four electrons of arsenic are now exhausted but what is the valency of arsenic how many valence electrons are there there are five so what happens to that one extra electron this free electron this electron is left behind it does not participate in the covalent bond formation process so what happens to that this free electron enters into the conduction band of germanium semiconductor atom now it is this free electron which is responsible for current conduction in the n type extrinsic semiconductor now so we discussed that the one electron which is left behind which does not participate in the covalent bond formation process enters into the conduction band of germanium semiconductor and uh, is responsible for current conduction so, so in case of now we will uh, find out why it is called as n type semiconductor now as in this uh, n type semiconductor what we discussed earlier the free electron is responsible for current conduction so a negative charge carrier is responsible for increase in the conductivity of the semiconductor a negative charge carrier that is electron is responsible for increase in the current flow in the semiconductor so the n stands for negative n type semiconductors n stands for negative this n type semiconductors now in thus in n type semiconductors the concentration of the free electrons in the conduction band is way much than the concentration of holes in the valence band some amount of holes are produced because of uh, thermal uh, energy the some amount of electron holes pairs are produced but the concentration of holes are way much less than the concentration of free electrons so the electrons 
are the majority charge carriers and the holes are the minority charge carriers in n type semiconductors. Here we have is the energy band uh, diagram representation of n type semiconductors. As we see this is the conduction band and the concentration of electrons is much greater than the concentration of holes in the valence band. So, another important uh, note is that as the pentavalent impurity it uh, generates one uh, extra electron. So, it in a way donates one electron to the semiconductor atom. So, it acts as a donor impurity. So, it is called as a donor impurity as it donates one of its five valence electrons to the semiconductor atom which is responsible for increasing the conductivity. Now, here is the current uh, flow diagram in uh, n type uh, semiconductors. Here we have is the sorry for the picture quality, it will come up soon. Current flow diagram in n type semiconductor. Okay. Now, when the n type semiconductor is connected to a power supply unit with its positive terminal connected to the left side let us say here and uh, the negative terminal is connected to the right side. The majority charge carriers or free electrons move from right to the left. It is because this negative terminal pushes the electrons because of repulsion while the positive terminal attracts the electrons towards it. So, it, uh, the net uh, movement or the net result is the movement of the free electrons from right to left. While the minority holes, the uh, less concentration holes, they move uh, from right to, uh, from left to right because of uh, repulsion by the positive terminal or attraction by the negative terminal. This negative terminal attracts the holes towards them while the positive terminal repels the holes. The current flows in the direction of the holes as we know that current always flows conventional current always flows opposite to the direction of motion of free electrons. So, the current flows from this to this. So, this is the current flow diagram in n type semiconductors. So, I have uh, here discussed about uh, the basic concepts in uh, the n type semiconductors, their fabrication, the energy band diagram, the current flow. So, hope uh, you liked it and uh, thank you very much.